Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Quite a game here folks, quite a game. This could be a preview of the upcoming World Championship match in November in New York City as white current world champion Magnus Carlsen and as black is upcoming challenger for the World Championship Sergei Karyakin. It's a hell of a game. Um, I gotta say Sergey wasn't shy, neither was Magnus. They didn't play one of those games where we'll just piddle around and maneuver for a while and draw. They played. So let's get to it. Carlson is white. Karyakin is black. It's going to be a Sicilian. A little bit different than a lot of Sicilians. Queen, Bishop, Pawn, Pawn. I kind of like this setup a little bit better for white. Well, it has, the C-pawn is missing for white, and that C-pawn is now on D4. I like that really good center. Castles. Now, that makes this pawn in pre. You have two. Here's two. When this knight moves, this pawn will be up for grabs. So he's got to do something, and he decides to go D5. That goes back to B8. There's really no point in going here because where are you going to go? You still can't go here or here. Knight c3. Bishop. That's the only thing I don't like. Is a light squared bishop can't get back. And that pin is really, really annoying. h3 to kick it. Now, this is a little different. The bishop can't retreat. There's a pawn here. So he decides to take it. Which is the correct move. Queen takes knight rook b1 okay even game these guys probably seen this position on their boards and analyzing a million times rook comes over typical not so sure on the f rook though but the computer to show it is one of the top moves so who might second guess Sergei Karyakin and Fritz 15 bishop knight Queen goes back to e2. Now this looks fairly harmless, but pretty soon all hell is going to break loose. Knight to d7, bishop g5. Going after that pawn. He decides to let him have it. Now, do you take it? And he'll go g5. And the bishop will be trapped for a while. How do you save it? Put the knight on b5 maybe for white. It gets tricky. I didn't think the Magnus won the con the, uh, just the difficulties of it. And he goes bishop h4. Complications. There we go. Boy, I'll tell you what. I'm an American and I have trouble speaking English right now. g5. Bishop g3. Now, very gutsy. Moving these pawns. We'll see how it works out. Now, if you notice... Black's queen is over here, and both of his rooks are on the king's side of the board. We're going to see how this works out. Queen a6. Said to try to trade. Magnus, of course, wants no part of that. Rook c4, which is a move I question. It's not a blunder, but it causes him a lot of difficulties. I think knight c4 was a much, a much better move. King h1, rook a to c8, decides to double up. He's just going to ignore any of the problems that he has on the king side. We'll see if that's his doom or not. f4, Magnus goes, let's go. Pawn takes, bishop takes, queen b6. Now, how is the queen going to get back on the king side? How is he going to do it? I mean, somehow if he can move this knight, which is in a really good spot, maybe go queen here. Get the queen back. It's tough. Queen h5. Magnus just goes for it, of course. Knight f6. Queen f5. Obviously, this d pawn, he goes here. He can't chase the queen off. Queen d8. Now he's desperately trying to get the queen back to help. 
Bishop, rook d4. It's still okay for black here. It looks a little, it looks scarier than it really is. The bishop takes, pawn takes. He just brings the other rook, gets that rook out of there. Goes queen of d7 instead. Probably, probably a good move there. I mean, I, I don't think rook takes is the proper move. Queen f3. Rook b4. Got to get that rook out of there. Rook d2. Now the other rook comes over. Rook f8. Now you're going to see this rook comes over. You got a battery and that rook's helping out here. G4. Here it comes. A5. Rook to G2. Now he brings the other rook over. Threading now to go G5. Knight to H7. He's got to do it. H4. Rook B6. Trying to get the rook over in defense. G5. Magnus just keeps going. Rook g6 is probably a decent move here. I think he panicked a little bit, Sergey, and he went king h8. Not a blunder, but an accuracy, I'll call it. Here out comes the other rook. Now comes the mistake. Now we're on move 35. Maybe he was in time trouble. I really don't know. Rook g6 is probably your only move. Maybe rook d6. Maybe even queen d6. But he goes f5 and bang. It's a two, over a two-point advantage for Magnus. If you want rook g6, bishop a4, queen c8. But after f5, queen h3. Now that pawn is pinned. And now he, bl he blunders again. Rook d6 maybe. h5. But he goes rook b4. And that's the end. Pawn takes. The bishop takes. Queen g3. Threatening mate in two. Queen checks. Rook takes. Rook takes mate. Knight f6. Trying to struggle to survive. Queen g6. Threatening the bishop. Knight g4. Rook takes. And that's the end, of course. And that's where Sergei Karyakin. Upcoming challenger to Magnus Carlsen resigns. Give you an idea after queen of d6, queen takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, and waits up a full piece. And black pawns are all going to fall anyway. So there you have it, folks. I think Sergei went for it. Backfired on him. You need your pieces around your king when the attack comes. So well done by Magnus. So there's round three of the Bilbo Masters Final 2016. Preview of what's coming up in November? We'll have to see. Anyway, folks, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.